This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. The Python Hyena. And folks, I have a wonderful actor on the phone with me. In fact, I was preparing myself, uh, watching some uh, uh, gruesome footage of him over the weekend. But uh, but we all love him just the same, including some music videos ca- ca- that I watched recently that uh, were in tribute to him. So I got the wonderfully talented William McNamara on the phone with me this evening. How you do, William? I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. A nice warm day in Los Angeles, Santa Monica, actually. Santa Monica. I've done some interviews from there. Yep. Yep. Fantastic place. Yeah, I've had uh, Nick Mancuso on here. He was from there. Um, Lisa Lang was was there. <laughs> she moved moved back to Canada. Um, but um, yeah, wow. you, you're you're four hours behind me. Four hours. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm in that four hours. Wait, where, so how is that possible? You're on you're on uh, Eastern Standard Time, right? Like New York time. I knew you were. I knew you were going to say that, because New York okay. is is uh, one hour behind me. We're in that little place. I guarantee you, Donald Trump doesn't even know where we are. <laughs> we're, well, that's we're, not saying much. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> but where are you then? Wait a second. Okay, so where are you if you're four hours ahead? Yeah, I'm in New Brunswick, Canada, and. Uh, where is that? It is way up east. Uh, you do you know where uh, Nova Scotia is? Yeah, of course. Yes. We're we're handy to Nova Scotia, Halifax, Nova gotcha. Scotia. They're about four hours away from us on a drive. So, gotcha. Okay. So I'm up there. There's three cities in uh, New Brunswick. There's Fredericton, Saint John, and there's uh, Moncton. And uh, okay. Yeah. So we're <laughs> we're actually four hours ahead of you, so. Wow, okay. Yep. And uh, despite what some people might think, we actually got good, warm, sunny weather right now. <laughs> Most people think we live in igloos here. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. Yeah, it is funny. I always say our closest celebrities, I think, are the trailer part boys. So if you know who they are, you might have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly do. <laughs> I love the trailer part boys. I've been trying to get them on here, and I don't know. They they might be smoking too much weed <laughs> to get on. Yeah, here. very possible. I got to congratulate them because their movie Swearing at just broke the Guinness Book of Records of the most f bombs dropped in a movie. They beat out The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> they have You're kidding. Nine hundred and thirty five oh, wow. f bombs in Swearing at. <laughs> Were they are they are they rated R or X? They're rated R, but I'm surprised it didn't get an X because there's some genitalia in that movie. Basically, it's the trailer part boys pl- uh, playing their real life selves, and Swearnet oh. is uh, kind of a censorship uh, retaliation on their part, and so they did a movie based on it. <laughs> and a wow. lot of a lot of people except me hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but 935, Funny. the fact that it beat the Wolf of Wall Street in the South Park movie, that's an achievement on their part. <laughs> wow, that really is. That's amazing. Because yeah, I'm doing a movie now. I'm producing my own uh, my little movie now, and, and I'm just worried about because there's a few F-bombs in it. Uh, so I'm always worried about the rating system because if you get, you know, if you get in... in you know, not a good rating. It's hard to distribute your films, but independent film. You know what? And I like independent films too. We get a lot of those shot up here, and I I, I wish more pe- more uh, films would get shot up here in Canada because uh, a lot of times, you know, you get uh, Daredevil or not Daredevil, um, Deadpool and Mean Girls shot up here, but they're American films, and I'm like, I miss the days when we had Canadian films, you know. And we what used the Canadian film industry. What happened? Why aren't they shooting them anymore? That's a good question. I think a lot of it is uh, um, lack of uh, support from the government. Um, at least that's what I'm hearing. Because we used to have movies like Class of 1984, Black Christmas, uh, Meatballs, Porkies, and of course our biggest one, Bon Cop, Bad Cop. And if you haven't seen that, that's fantastic. What's it called again? Say what it, what's it's it called. It's called uh, Bond Cop, Bag Cop. It stars Colin oh. Fuhrer. It's okay, basically, it's a bilingual film. It's half French and half English. And it's got this body that uh, 
was dropped from a high place and it lands on the sign. And uh, <laughs> one half the body is on one jurisdiction and one's in the other. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's a funny movie. They just had a sequel come out to it this year. The first one came out in 2006, so and it beat out Porky's as the highest grossing Canadian film, and it's, it was very, very funny and very intelligent. It's a cop comedy. Oh, God, that sounds great. Yeah, you got to check that out. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, you were in a movie. i got, I got to start off by talking about, uh, you know... You were in a movie called Opera in 1987. It's funny because um, I wasn't quite aware the opera was celebrating an anniversary until just uh, a couple hours before I messaged you. Actually, it might, be, it might have been an hour before I messaged you. What had happened because I had, I've been trying to um, celebrate the 40th anniversary of Suspiria. Which is a, oh sure yeah, and I had Stephanie Stephania Cassini on here back in March, my first uh, interview in Rome, Italy. I've been in talks to get Jessica Harper on here, and I I can't wait to get her on here. But I've been very, very patient about that. But uh, she and I've been in talks. But she's been busy, and I was looking up Dario Argento. I was go wanted well, to get him on here, and then I was like couldn't find any information. And I was looking down his credits and. I saw opera there in 1987. I was like, holy cow, he's got another anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, uh, um, I clicked onto it, and I was like, it's been a while. So I, I, I clicked onto it, and I actually watched the movie online there. It's a refresher, and uh, um, I love the movie. Yeah. And I gotta say, Darius is—he's one of these uh, directors like Brian De Palma, and David Cronenberg, who can be very, very graphic, but he can get away with it because his use of color and style and, yeah, uh, like, right. oh my goodness, uh, the guy's just a maestro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's a, he's a man. He really is. He really is. You know, he was uh, Dario Argento uh, in the early days. He and Bernardo Bertolucci were writing partners. Okay. And they both decided to go off in different directions. But Bertolucci became Bertolucci, and Dario stayed in Italy and just you know con you know continued to do his horror movies. Well, he does some really good horror movies. I've seen a number of Argento films, and uh, loved Suspiria, loved Deep Red, and uh, yeah. loved Opera. You know, uh, I grew just a new appreciation for it, uh, just watching it uh, this week. I don't know whether that's on Blu-ray yet. It's certainly not here in town. Is that out on Blu-ray? That I don't know. I'm not sure. Be nice. It should be. Yeah, because uh, that that was your first film, was it not? No, no, no. no. In fact, I got opera because I was in Italy shooting a, an Italian miniseries. So I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was actually going to heading back to New York, uh, shooting a movie called um, The Secret of the Sahara. Okay. And it was a huge international co-production. Uh, Rye TV, Canal Plus, and, um, and I think the BBC. And I was just over there, and I was actually pretty much getting close to being done. And I met Dario Argento. He said, hey, I've got this part. you want to do it? And I said, sure. And uh, but I'd already uh, had already done. Um, gosh, I I had done a, maybe a, 1987. I'd already done. I can't remember. I've, I'm pretty sure I've done a few movies prior to that. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I was looking at uh, Wikipedia. Sometimes Wikipedia is not up to date. I wasn't looking yeah, at Wikipedia. Yeah, and it, it lists. I I think that listed opera as your first, but may, maybe I should be checking out Internet Movie Database instead. Yeah, I think IMDb is better. I really do. That's what I've been hearing. But what yeah. what, what was it like working with Dario Argento? You know, it, it's been a really long time, so it's so hard for me to remember. I did I did have a great experience on it because I thought Dario was a genius. Yeah. And uh, you know, pretty amazing, uh, interesting director. And I also uh, got along really well with um, uh, with Ian Charlson, the British actor. So for me, it was a great experience. Yeah. Have you, had you seen any of his films prior to doing opera? No, I didn't know who he was. I, didn't, I had no idea who he was. They just offered me a lot of money, <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, I was over there in, um, like I said, Rome, 
shooting a miniseries that I got hired out of New York to do. And uh, that was basically, I think that's, that's uh, yeah, they just, you know, I had no idea who he was. And then, you know, it's funny, later on in life, it did, it was interesting because later on in life, it, it came back uh, years later, I was in L.A., mm-hmm. and I had an audition for Quentin Tarantino, um, his, um, for Reservoir Dogs. And it was a terrible audition. I went in, I had the whole script with me, and I didn't have the script pinned together. So w- during the middle of the audition, I lost my place, but then the, script, the, the pieces of the script kept falling on the ground. So it was completely a terrible, such, you know, terrible experience. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. And Quentin Tarantino Tern- was so nice. He goes, oh, man, don't worry about it. I said, hey, by the way, I loved your movie uh, Opera. And oh. I was shocked. I was like, Opera? It never came out. This is, you know, this is 20 years, 25 years ago. I had, you know, I was totally shocked because I had no idea that the movie, that, you know, took a real, you know, film up. Uh, buff to, to know about opera so i knew right away this guy quentin tarantino was going places oh yeah he did oh i, yeah, I hope did. i hope you can get back into one of his films yeah that'd be nice yeah um yeah reservoir dog was uh his first feature i believe and uh but uh with opera you weren't in it for a real long time but i'm gonna tell you you <laughs> You had, uh, you had a pretty brutal dis, dis, demise in the film. Of course, the situation to explain to anybody who hasn't seen it, you have uh, somebody, of course, uh, an assailant grabs, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Christina. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce it either. I'm looking at it here. Uh, Marcilac, I think. Of course, she is put in a position where she's tied to a pillar, She's got tape over her mouth, and she's got those, uh, like, needles just taped just under her eye to make sure that she keeps her eyes open. And uh, Gento knows how to make people uncomfortable because he's he's done that in so many of his movies. Right. And, of course, you come in, uh, and you're kind of bewildered about what happened, you know, what's going on, and... You get close enough, and she's trying to warn you, but she can't, you know. And and then all of a sudden, this knife comes up and plunges right under your jaw. And he has that shot inside your mouth where you can see the bleed. And I'm like, <laughs> only Argento would do that. Right. <laughs> before I talk yeah, about... Was... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go... No, you go ahead. I was going to say, before we talk about that in detail... I gotta say, I love that heavy metal music that blared during your kill scene. You know, uh, and I don't know who is that. Is that that is that Iron Maiden? Huh? I don't know. Because that's question. what it sounds I like. I have no idea. It's a good question, though. I don't know. It does yeah, it. Th- it does it through all the kill scenes, but I think it's a different uh, songs. But I like what the the version or whatever it is that plays during your kill scene and it's i, I know think brian Eno. didn't brian Eno do the music or somebody famous like somebody interesting and weird and famous like that wasn't it brian Eno, or is that one of his other dario gento's other movies well brian Eno, yeah brian Eno did do music on it i did not know that brian Eno did that kind of music i know they did music in rock and roll high school but that was kind of more of a, a punk yeah. issue i don't know I, I need to look into that a little further, but I got to say it, with the opera music going, and then the kills, and then this metal-type uh, screeching music playing to to heighten the tension, I thought that was very, very well done. I love that. That was a nice yeah. addition. Yeah. 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 Argento's a genius, and you can't, you know, he really is. Now, of course, you were... <laughs> Tell me about the process of your death scene. Well, the major process was making that, they had to make that uh, replica of my head. So I had to sit in like a, you know, a mold for hours. Yeah. Um, because they wanted a perfect replica. They did my teeth. I mean, they, I mean, it was like, it was unbelievable. I mean, it really was um, quite quite a lengthy, the makeup process was a lengthy process. Yeah. And, uh, and Dario really liked to play things, you know, really wanted me and the, and the girl, Christina, to be scared all the time, you know. He really was like, uh, he da- he was, everything felt dangerous, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I, mean, I don't <laughs> think it would go well in the United States. Uh, but 
get away with it in Italy because in Italy the actors are treated literally like props. What was Christina like? You know, I don't remember her that well, and we never really got to be, you know, that, that close on it. I don't remember her that well. I know eventually I plan to reach out to her uh, to come on and talk about this film, but you you had some credits she a, on... She's from Spain, right? She was from Spain. Uh, I think she was Spanish, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think well, she, she was from Spain. She, she, well, yeah, okay. I, I um, tried recently to, to uh, do an interview from an Argento movie uh, from Italy, and I, this was my total ignorance. That I found out the actor could not speak English. Uh, and I had to be very apologetic. I don't know whether they have one of those things that can translate, because they would have done the interview, and I was like, holy cow, I can only speak English, and I never stopped to think about that. I was like, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. Well, I, I, I take it that was not English dub in, uh, in opera. Yeah, the- yeah, my voice was dubbed by some English actor. That was crazy. You know, I should have known better because um, I, I, I did. Re- I was like, I, I, I did notice that they weren't using, paying very much attention to recording sound. Like they are in the United States, they're crazy. The sound in the United States, they really, uh, you know, they really, you know, make sure your, you know, the sound is on. Those guys just weren't doing anything. So oh wow! Like, hmm, something's fishy here. And of course, I learned my lesson. Uh, I was so green. It was such an. I was so early in my career. That uh, that I didn't know what the heck was going on, and uh, you know, an actor never likes to be dubbed uh, in another language. You know, even in, in, in their own language, that's not a good sign. So no. they, had, they hired some English actor to dub my voice, which is crazy. Can, can, can Christina speak English? Yeah, Christina. Uh, Christina does not. Oh no, she spoke English. Yeah, she spoke a little bit of English, but they probably dubbed her voice as well. I was going to say, if I, I'd feel stupid reaching out to her and have, strike out twice here. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, I knew you spoke English because I've seen some of your other films, so. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, opera Opera was very clever. Argento is very clever. And I don't want to give away any spoilers, but I, I love the, that plan that came together to figure out who the assailant was and how, w- what they used to seek him out. I thought that was clever. It's been so long, I don't even remember the storyline. I can't remember what happened. I'll just hint you on this. Ravens. <laughs> You know Ravens? Yes. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I will say. Is r- Ravens I'm, remember when people wrong them, I guess. Oh, that's right. Yes. And Ravens do, yes. Ravens are, ex- that's right. We had, that was the big thing on the set. It was filming the Ravens was really complicated and complex. We had these real Ravens. Yeah. And they're big, black, giant birds. I mean, they're really spooky. But they're super intelligent. You don't want to mess with them. I saw a thing on the internet on the the top ten most intelligent animals on the planet. Ravens listed at number five. Wow. Number four was elephants. Number three was orangutans. Number two was uh, was dolphins. Number one was chimpanzee. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. But Ravens is but the smartest. Sense. Yeah. But, Interesting. Uh, yeah. And speaking of thrillers, I remember seeing this one in theaters, uh, Copycat. <laughs> yes. I saw that one underrated thriller. I, I think it's just as good as Silence of the Lambs, I think. Well, Copycat had a bit of a hard time because, unfortunately, two things very unusual about Copycat, which, which to its credit... Not many uh, Hollywood movies get made with a female as the leading man. Which okay. Sigourney Weaver was like a leading man, but she was a female. So most of those movies, and now if it, it could be the females in trouble, like Sigourney Weaver was being stalked by me, but the other actor should be, in Hollywood formulas, should have been a man. The detective that saved her uh, was Holly Hunter, who's mm-hmm. also a woman. Yep. So... 
very uh, difficult for those movies, according to Hollywood studios. They have a reason why they're, you know, they, they make their formulas. The woman's in trouble, the man saves her, whether he's a detective or whatever he is. So in that movie, they went against the grain. They tried something very risky, uh, which is having Holly Hunter be the, you know, be the savior. I'm glad so they did it. Yeah, I'm glad they did it too. It makes it, you know, much more interesting. Now, the other problem was it came out about a week or two after uh, that movie Seven with Brad oh, Pitt and yeah. Basie. Yeah. So, you know, the, the 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 or three weeks after, and so what that means is that the serial killer movie had saturated the United States. So who wants to see another movie about a serial killer movie? And in fact, the bad thing happened, which was it's set up for, you know, anybody that didn't like copycat review-wise, they would say copycat certainly is a copycat, but not nowhere near as good as Seven. So, you know, copycatted Seven. You know, made oh. it look like we were trying to copycat Seven, and of course, we were made at the exact, they were shooting at the exact same time. Well, I, I gave Copycat a very positive review. I, I thought the movie was very smart. It, um, I love the fact what they did with the leading ladies. I just watched uh, The Big Sick um, last week, and you know, Holly Hunter, I gotta say, she's still, she's still a very attractive, beautiful woman. Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. Yep, but uh, I I think she was a very strong factor. In fact, Roger Ebert had written written uh, um, gave the movie a positive review, and and he uh, cited Holly Hunter as being um, a strong point because she's this very uh, small woman in stature, but she's put in a right. position where she has to like because Sigourney Weaver, we know her from Alien, and and you know she's just one of these. Um, um, kick-ass uh, uh, females, and here she is the one in trouble. So it worked really well, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 What was your experience like working with uh, Sigourney Weaver and Holly Hunter? Uh, well, both of them fabulous actors, so that's an incredible honor to be working with actors like Sigourney and Holly. And uh, Holly is a very warm person, and Sigourney is a little, not, I don't want to say cold, but she's a little bit more reserved. She's just very reserved okay. and, you know, very pri- a very private person, and I don't blame her. And, but Holly's the kind of person, you know, you see her on the street 25 years later, hey, Billy, how you doing? Good to see you. Big hugs and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Um, she, her voice, uh, I don't know what it is that... Uh, Jodie Foster's got this too. When, when they talk, there's um, there's something about their voice that um, I don't even know how I can explain it. I, I find it very attractive myself in the way they talk. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I can't explain to it what it is. You'd have to listen to them talk to to get what I'm talking about because Jodie Foster is another one that's got the same thing. But um, right. Yep. But I enjoyed Copycat, and I saw that in theaters, and I remember it well. And and um, and Sigourney in that very harsh situation where she had to use a broom handle to lure her newspaper in, and and, uh, and then she'd find stuff going on in her apartment, and and uh, I yeah. thought it was nice and creepy. And of course, you had a nice creepy role in the film. Yes. Yep. Of course, that was directed by John and Mill. One, I think, one of his better movies. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he's actually very good. I don't know if you ever saw, uh, I think it was called The Singing Detective. I think it was a BBC show. Okay. Uh, it was fantastic. British, uh, uh, yeah, British show. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, some other films you, I have listed down here. You did, of course, uh, Dream a Little Dream. Yep. Yep. I did. Uh, unfortunately, we no longer have Corey Haim in his last movie was actually That's shot right. in the city <laughs> called American oh, wow. yeah American Sunset. I did not meet him, but I, I know one or two of his co-stars from that movie and uh, that was shot here and uh, and uh, it's, it's unfortunately he's, he's gone, but uh, Mar- American Sunset I think it's called hostage on uh, IMDB, but it was called American Sunset and uh, there's a big thing about him uh, shooting a film here and and of course, Corey Feldman was also also in that, and uh, and Harry Dean Stanton, and 
and Jason Robards and Piper Laurie. There's a good cast in that movie. It's been a little while since I've seen the movie, but uh, what was your experience like on that? On Dream Little Dream? Yeah. Uh, that was a fantastic, you know, that was a lot of fun to shoot. I mean, that was just a lot of fun, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, working with, uh, you know, I, didn't, I don't think I had any scenes with Jason Robards. But just working with that, that group of people was, again, amazing. I, mean, I have to say it was amazing. Yeah. Any mem uh, yeah, so. memories of Corey Feldman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Both Corey Feldman and Corey Haim, great. You know, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, real professionals. Um, I think at the time, though, they were a little, you know, I didn't spend too much time with them because I was not, uh, I was sober at that time. And I think that there was a lot of uh, probably probably drinking and drugs on the set that I, you know, went without. Yeah, and uh, you got to work with the gorgeous Erica Olenek uh, in a couple of films as well. Um, yeah. Boy, it, you know, she. I remember her in E.T., the extraterrestrial, and she just grew into this gorgeous woman. And, uh, and of course, you had to chase her, so to speak, and chase her. So you had to... Uh, you had... You had to escort her, but I, I think she was the one doing the escorting. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's right. That's exactly um, right. How, how, I know I'm going to ask a Howard Stern question here, but uh, how do you are, are able to work with a woman that gorgeous? Are you able to keep it together? Oh, yeah. We ended up getting engaged after that movie, so yeah. Well, she, yep. yeah, she, you had her in that and in um, uh, Girl in the Cadillac. Between the yeah, two films. we did films, that movie together. Yeah? What, 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 between the two films, which one did you prefer? Well, um, Chaser was a lot of hard work and not much fun. So okay. that was the problem with that. And Girl in the Cadillac, you know, me and Erica kind of put the movie together, and we had a lot more to do with the input of uh, what was going on in the movie so it was a lot more fun for us it was like a, a you know a team project that her and I put together okay what what was yeah. the, the issues behind chasers uh, well you know chasers was a, a big budget uh, studio film Dennis mm -hmm. Hopper was the director so there was no issues it's just it's a lot more you know there's a lot more pressure all the time and, okay. and, uh, and yeah so you know it's just it's just much more high pressured Dennis Hopper, we just lost him not too long ago. What was your experience yeah. like with him? A uh, phenomenal director. I mean, really pushed my, you know, pushed me to my limit, which is fantastic. Really taught me a lot, you know. And he's, you know, he's a, he's a, you know, he he knows a lot about acting. I can tell you that. He's because he's been around for so many years and worked with uh, James Dean on multiple projects and. He was just, uh, you know, he's a, he was a legend. He's working with a legend. Yes. And another film i got to bring up um, is The Ringmaster. Now, last year, last October, I had the pleasure of having Molly Hagen on here, and uh, we're celebrating the movie Election, which I think is an, an underrated, uh, fantastic teen flick with her and uh, yeah. Matthew Broderick and Reese Witherspoon, but I had to bring up uh, The Ringmaster, and she loved working on The Ringmaster. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was tons of fun, yes. That was great. <laughs> and what was it like working with Jerry Springer? He was a super nice guy. I mean, I had a really good time with him. Um, yeah, I just found him to be really professional, extremely talented. I mean, he did a great job. Is I mean, he's obviously he's playing himself, but at the same time, he's also, you know, he was also, uh, um, he had to do a lot of acting. So he did a phenomenal job. I'm surprised that movie didn't do better, you know, because it really was funny. Yeah, and uh, I, I love the, the the situation between Molly Hagen and Jamie Presley. <laughs> yeah. Like, this mother-daughter team one-upping each other in the most grotesque <laughs> manner. <laughs> yes, yes. But That's here, crazy. yeah, I actually got my interview with Molly Hagen up on YouTube. When if you check it out, and uh, and um, she had a great time making that. And of course, you oh, were fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and of course, you were one of these people that, uh, well, amongst that group of uh, very <laughs> dysfunctional people. 
<laughs> waiting, to, waiting to get on on there and say your piece. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Out of all your films, you know, um, is there? do you have a favorite? I know that's a tough question, but is there one that just stands out as your favorite that you've done? That's a tough question just because, like, saying who's your favorite child, you know? If you have children, or your favorite dog, if you've got two or three dogs, it's like, you know, I mean, you know, there's each one is, like, special for its own. But I would say, I guess, I guess Stealing Home and and Wildflower would be my two favorite, you know, that had the best, most exciting, fun times on. Okay. Uh, tell me about that. Anything in particular? Yeah. Well, Stealing Home was, you know, opposite Jodie Foster, and it was one of my first movies I ever did. And big Warner Brothers movie, just really exciting. Me and Jodie Foster, you know, that's a big, for a new a young actor, you know, to work with Jodie Foster was just like, it was, an, it was incredible. And we did some great work together. So it was just like, for me, that, that was the most exciting event in my life that I can remember, you know? Mm-hmm. And then Wildflower, the same thing. Reese Witherspoon and Patricia Arquette. And Diane Keaton directing, so I was surrounded by three amazing women. I mean, that's for a guy. There's nothing better than that. Yeah, and you worked with Elizabeth Shue as well, and uh, uh, Radio Inside. Yeah. Yep. 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 And of course, you're a big animal activist. And we, I told you we have to talk about that. Um, yeah. We've had some situations with animals here because. Uh, I guess I, I was driving into town Saturday, and this I never see them, but I guess a truck had hit a black bear, and we ne- oh. I, I've only seen black bears twice in my life, in and around here, you know. So, yeah, yeah, the, I guess the bear went out in front of him, and hit this bear. Um, oh. Yeah, I know we got lots of deer here. Um, my uh, nephew's got a couple of dogs, and they just had a very bad experience with a porcupine. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, and I bet you they won't learn from it because my parents have an Australian shepherd, and after it got sprayed by a skunk the first time, they said it would never happen again. Well, it happened again. <laughs> yeah. Don't learn. Yep. I believe it. I believe it. Yep. <laughs> They don't learn, but um, no. I remember. I'm I'm gonna bring you back several years ago. I remember an incident uh, that happened over the news. Uh, I was. Uh, I don't even know how this could have been handled, but I was outraged by it. Remember the situation where there was like 50 exotic animals that were yes. loose, and they shot them, and some of them were Bengal tigers, which are endangered. Yep. yep. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. And I guess there's been a lot of speculations as to um, uh, there's been some people saying that that guy was not guilty of it, that the authorities were guilty of it. But again, well, here's one thing that was said, and I forget which one of the um, animal wildlife shows was stating it, but they said uh, if that guy was guilty and these animals – needed to be uh, shot. He said there was 72 horses that was in a in a, a barn area, and not one of them was uh, dead. And these were, most of these were, that were loose were carnivores. So there was a little uh, bit of... No, I don't know about that. I didn't... I, yeah, it is, it's interesting. It's weird. That's yep. what it all means. Yep. But uh, you get into uh, helping wildlife, and this is something I really got to applaud you for because um, I, I've, I've growing up, my, my favorite type of animals, I love African wildlife. I've never been outside New Brunswick, so I, I, my, my view of Africa has been over YouTube, you know, but, but they got such interesting, diverse wildlife. But animals are so unique, and uh, you just look at some of them, and it's like um, how like the colors on them and and how they move and and get around and uh it's just amazing to watch and i i know you're into uh uh and uh saving animals um you have to give us a little background about how you got started in that i mean i don't know i mean i just it just things progress i just would save a dog or a cat or help out or try to find somebody's lost dog and just you know, just had this natural sort of uh, inkling or attraction to helping. 
and then it just kind of just continued to blossom. It was kind of like a seed that was planted in me, and yeah. uh, and and I, you know, I I watered the seed and gave it a lot of light, and uh, and it just blossomed. And I just I don't know how it started or why it started. It was just a an inner sort of purpose of mine that I just felt drawn to do. I find it weird how many people own pets that really shouldn't own pets, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that just that's just bizarre to me. They'll they'll buy a dog and it stays leashed in the backyard and it and it uh, gets neglected and I don't understand these people why they do that if if they're you know, if they're not going to take care of it, don't get it, you know? Right. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Uh, I have a cat home. I love my cat. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I love my cat. It's funny because um, he was down the road last night when I was driving home, and and he was going towards me. And he sticks to the side of the road, and as I was driving, I was saying to myself. Right at the moment I get part in the driveway, I'm going to see him come up the driveway. It's like I've interrupted his journey. <laughs> and sure yeah. enough, there he come on. I could see the, couldn't see the black, but I could see the white because it was night. And uh, here he's coming. He jumps up on my car, and he's one of those cats that's very friendly, and he purrs loud, and it's got to rub against my my uh, leg and whatnot. So, so wow. uh, that the animals that my folks have, my nephew have, and my cat. Uh, they're very, very well loved. But one situation I know that happened here a few years ago, and I was not pleased about it. Um, this guy owned um, an African rock python, which I guess are illegal here. And I guess that I guess they're blaming it for the death of uh, a couple of children. And uh, wow, yeah. Now, um, the African rot python, I believe, is the second longest snake in the world. And I've seen video of them killing impala. So they're, they're definitely a powerful snake. But here's something that bothered me. Now, I understand people being outraged, but they, they confiscated the snake and they killed it. But the guy owned other snakes, like Bur Burmese python. He owned some alligators and some uh, box turtles. And what really ticked me off is that they killed the other snakes, they killed the alligators, and the only thing that they didn't kill was the box turtles. That I guess the local zoo took them in. I'm sitting here thinking the only reason the turtles got to live is because they're endangered. They, they might as well come out and say it. But it bothered me that the other uh, those other animals had to be killed because of this one incident. I was not pleased with that. It does sound some, does seem strange. Yeah. Do you encounter stuff like that when you're you're doing your activism? No, not really. Uh uh. No. Nope. I mean, most of the stuff that I do, people are, you know, it's just trying to rescue or find homes for even exo I've done exotic animals as well. So people are all very helpful, and they you know they want the best for the animal. I haven't been involved in any, you know, animals that have uh, harmed other people. I wouldn't. That, I kind of stay away from that because it is kind of a sad situation. Yeah. Well, what kind of exotic animals have you uh, been involved with? Everything. Bears, lions, tigers. I had a show on uh, National Geographic called uh, Animal Interventions. Me and my partner, Allison Eastwood, would roll up on people's houses and uh, try to convince them to let us take their exotic animal to a sanctuary. I but haven't I've seen I've removed and, and uh, rehomed, re you know, tons and tons of exotics. What was your experience like with some of these? Like, have you got any like any detailed experience like being around these animals? Like, what were they like? Like, any any stories there? No, I mean they're wild animals, and you know they shouldn't be in people's homes in America. So I mean, they're wild animals. They're beautiful. They're powerful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, but you don't want to personify them or you know make them. You know, they're not a dog, so no. you don't want to build a relationship with them. You know, outside inside of the uh, inside of their cage. And really, they need to be in you know in the outdoors and frolicking amongst themselves, not with human beings. Yeah, and uh, I don't I don't get it why people have to own them either because uh, I know That's there's crazy. been yeah it's like 
I have a cat, you know, and I, I often joke with my father. I said he's related to the lion, but he's way, 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 way down the list. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but exactly. He, I still love my cat, and nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. But I don't understand. Like, I'm a big snake lover, for example, but and people ask, do you own a snake? Well, no, I don't because they're very unpredictable, and you've got to know what you're doing when you're handling them, you know? That's right. Yeah, yep. that's right. Whereas I'm, I'm kind of used to, to having cats around. So, I'm, you know, you feed them, you know, uh, pay attention to them. They, they're pretty healthy. So, Yeah, exactly. Actually, all the animals, like with, the, with my cat, my parents have two dogs, my nephews get two dogs. They're all rescue animals. So, Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah. Yep. Did you ever hear the North Shore Animal League that uh, Howard Stern promotes? Yeah, of course. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a good organ. Yeah, absolutely. That I've supported it. Uh, not as much as I would like to, but I know he and his uh, wife, Beth Trotsky Stern, uh, opened up about that. And I know Howard. Howard, they, they, they don't know, is gifted in so many areas because uh, he's also a gifted photographer, and he did a calendar of his gorgeous wife with some of these animals at that sanctuary to, uh, so to, to build funds for it. And uh, he's a gifted photographer, and, I, of course, I ordered the calendar so that I could support the organization. Have you been to that? No, I haven't. No. You? I have actually I haven't been outside New Brunswick so Oh that's right okay. I I I'm a horrible traveler. I'd like to be able to do it. I've I've even had some people I've interviewed tell me to come to such and such a place, you have a place to stay and I'm like, "Yeah, it's just getting me outside <laughs> New Brunswick." Um, I I don't know. I wish I could do it. Uh maybe eventually I'll do that, but um I hear about this stuff and uh I think the North Shore Animal League is a terrific organization. I guess, I guess, judging from what I hear, I guess the sanctuary allows more freedom of the animals. Am I correct on that? Yes, much more freedom, yeah. And they're not sort of ogled by human beings all the time. And, you know, they, you know more natural settings and, and uh, just a, it's a better lifestyle. So, you know, it's just a mimic, uh, the, you know, the wilderness. Now, of course, it's still contained. You know, it's fenced in. But better than with, with you know than concrete and and, uh, and metal. Yes, I agree. And of, co- of course, with animals being in the pound, I think it's definitely better for them to be at that. And of course, they find homes for these animals as well. I don't like hearing about yeah. animals being put down. You know, it's from not having no. A, no. Yeah. That's a sad thing. And uh, I agree with Howard Stern. Every time he rants on one of these people that neglects their pets. And, or or they move. The worst is when they move and they leave their pets behind. That's the worst. Yeah. That's yeah. The worst. That, I, I don't care for that. Now, being uh, around the exotic animals, like what's the the most impressive thing you've seen? The most de- depressive? No, most impressive. Uh, like in terms of an animal, like you couldn't believe you were that close to it or whatever? Well, to, I guess a humpback whale I was in the water with, and in Cambodia with a with a you know a giant elephant that was walking through the jungle. So I'd say because they're just so large and powerful to be within inches of those kinds of animals and uh, not be harmed or not feel fear is uh, is an amazing thing. Oh wow, humpback whale! And you swam yeah. with it. Swam for a week, yeah. Yep. Holy gee, you weren't intimidated. No, not at all. Oh wow, and of course elephants and elephants are so smart. I'm amazed at uh, um, the brains of an elephant. Like uh, looking in a mirror, and they they know they they recognize themselves, or they. Uh, I've I've seen a video of el- an elephant painting. <laughs> they're 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 just yeah, but they're trained they're trained to do that, and the way they have to beat them to do that. So they're not. That's actually not an. Uh, sign of intelligence that's a sign of uh of of abuse oh abuse. oh i did i did not know that part of it like i knew in circuses yeah. that they there was some abuse i didn't know with with this no elephants aren't and natural aren't inclined to be artists they're not painters you have to beat them into submission to get them to do that 
an elephant's a pretty overwhelming creature to try to do that with. I, I, I yeah. never seen a, an animal uh, um, destroy a Range Rover the way an elephant can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw I saw this guy in a Range Rover in a video try to get an elephant to move out of the way on a path, and that just wasn't going to happen. That elephant flipped that Range Rover over with great ease. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, but, do it more often. Well, again, um, another video I saw there was this uh, tour bus at one of those sanctuaries and. It started backing up and backing up and backing up, and there was like zebras and impalas like looking at it and whatnot. And when it, after it got backed up so far, you could see this elephant just walking up towards it, so calm and so calm. And there was a fork in the road up above, and the elephant went the other way. But it's almost like the elephant was saying, "I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you back up." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just just the the, the mind of a uh, an elephant is just an impressive thing. Yeah, I know. Now you mentioned a uh, depressing thing. Have you seen anything that's really really ugly that uh, you've seen at, going to one of these homes? Yeah, just when the uh, large animals like bears are kept in you know ten by ten ten foot basically a pri- uh, you know jail cell. Uh, that's pretty sad. Do these people get arrested? No, it's not illegal in most states of the United States. Oh, I know that. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I know that would raise some questions here. I do know that. Yeah, I would hope so. So this, uh, I know you mentioned that you've got a, a project coming up. Is that animal related? Uh, there is a pit bull in the, in the movie, yes. Okay, tell us about this. Uh, it's it's a comedy about sort of a dark comedy about Hollywood. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 bright spot of this dark comedy is the uh, main character, his relationship to his pit bull. Are you starring in it? Yes, uh huh. I play the guy. Okay. Yep. <laughs> now uh, this my pit... pit bull too. Oh, it's your pit bull. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, was it? Uh, it must have been easy to work with your pit bull for the movie. Yes. Well. Yeah. And she, yesterday we had a big, you know, big scene yesterday, and she did a really good job. Yeah. Really good job. Yeah. So. So uh, yeah. So it's been it's been a, it's been pleasant. It's been a lot of fun working with my dog. I can't. Uh, I, I. I. It's been. You know. It's just been great. Actually. I can't say enough positive about it. You don't mind me asking really what, what what other pets do you have? That's it. We got That's a, a rescue uh, rescue pit bull. Who now? Who else? Who else is in this film? Uh, Angus McFadden, Billy Baldwin, Allison Eastwood, Paul Ben Victor, uh, loads of people. Yeah, and there'll be more uh, as I go along. I mean, you know, it's gonna we're gonna shoot it all summer, so. As uh, each scene comes up, I'm gonna you know get another friend of mine to play a, a great part. So we'll see. There's more more to come as well. You like work. You must like working with Allison Eastwood. You worked with her a couple times, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And uh, she's like yourself, an animal activist, right? I don't know much yeah, about ab- her. Absolutely. Yep. Animal activist. Well, you know, I think that's a very very important topic, and. Uh, I hate seeing animals harmed. Um, what do you think of zoos? Not a fan. Not a fan. No. Be- because I I found that now I don't know you might disagree, but especially with animals with that uh, are endangered, I find that there's some zoos that have been very very uh, good at uh, uh, breeding certain animals. Like I know. Uh, the Toronto Zoo has had a lot of luck breeding gorillas. Right. Yeah. I was wondering yeah. what. Yeah. There's some benefit to that, and yeah, absolutely. I just wish they were sort of larger, uh, you know, more natural habitats as opposed to any kind of uh, small enclosures. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And of course, uh, <clears throat> have you ever been to an African safari? In Africa? Yeah. No. 
I know they got something like that. I think in Toronto or in Inter- Toronto, Ontario, uh, African Wild Safari or something like that, where you yeah, can drive have it through. Yeah, San Diego too. Oh yeah, I've never been to one of those. I I just saw that scene in the the Omen where uh, they drive through. What is that like? Uh, what the the wild parks? The yeah, wild parks. like like are you are you a fan park. of those? Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's that. I'm a, yeah, that that I, I yes, definitely a fan. What have you seen? What's uh, that? The one in San Diego? Where uh, what animals did you see there? Uh, the animals in San Diego: lions, okay. mostly lions, and elephants. Now, obviously, the elephants and the lions are kept separate obviously but yes yes now how close do you get to them driving uh pretty close you get very close to them actually i know yeah. that there's some places like baboons will come and they'll take stuff off your car and whatnot have you ever had any situation where any of them have come up to your car no it's never happened to me uh-uh. no or people like no. uh zebras or whatnot will come up and people feed them or whatnot yeah, yep, giraffes, you could feed them. <laughs> They're a long, sticky tongue. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, this uh, this movie that's coming out, um, when, when's uh, the release date for that? The one I'm doing now? Yeah. In February. February of 2018. Is that going to be a theatrical release? Yeah, it'll be in 25 theaters. Oh, We're probably not going to get it. Yeah, but it'll be on video, so it'll be on demand and all that sort of stuff, and on cable. Yeah, but something like that deserves every bit the respect as the blockbusters. Let's face it, it's got a good cause behind it. Yeah, that's right. And I'll tell you, I like those Disney nature movies, like African Cats and Chimpanzee and those movies. I love those. I go to those every year because uh, it supports the, the cause. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Do you have any favorites of those movies? Uh, no, not really. I guess not. I heard a rumor uh, that uh, pandas are no longer endangered. Is that true? I don't know. Actually, no idea, actually. that was told to me uh, recently, and uh, I was like, if if they're off the endangered species list, I say bravo. Uh, I hope they can keep them off the endangered species list, if that's the case. Yep. Yep. Do you get a web page you like to plug? Uh, just probably my Facebook. Okay. Uh, it's a Facebook page, The Trouble with Billy. So that's just the, that's the name of the that's the name of the uh, the movie that I'm shooting now. It's called The Trouble with Billy. Okay. Facebook.com, The Trouble with Billy. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to uh, applause that. Uh, that cause, and I, I got to say again, I appreciate the fact that you're out there uh, helping these animals because uh, uh, they kind of they kind of need humans that uh, look out for them because uh, there's a lot of people, especially these people that bring illegal animals into the country. Like I saw like videos of people with uh, with um, pit vipers and like. <laughs> Tupperware dishes like I don't know why somebody wants to own one of those you know yeah it's strange you know and of course uh, when somebody gets bit like I heard the situation of somebody that owned a black mamba and somebody got bit and they die and of course it's the black mamba that gets gets uh, uh, killed for it and it, really it's not the fall of the snake yeah yeah it's so strange. yeah exactly well, William, it was uh, absolutely wonderful having you come on here this evening, and I loved hearing your passion for animals, and uh, and I want to encourage you to keep uh, keep with that passion, and and um, you know, if Allison Eastwood wants to come on here, I'd be happy to to further promote that. And um, sounds good. Yeah, I I think that would would you say it's called the the problem with Billy? The trouble. Oh, the trouble with Billy. Yep. And that comes out next year? Yeah, February. Okay, perfect. Then uh, we're going to keep a lookout on that. And, of course, celebrating the uh, 30th anniversary of opera. <laughs> yep, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, did you know it was the 30th anniversary of the film? I did not. 
<laughs> I found out just by accident. It was like uh, looking up Dario Argento. It's like, well, okay, let's let's celebrate this film. <laughs> it, there was a big thing at in Texas. I think it was a Texas convention they were doing something for uh suspiria when i interviewed uh stephanie cassini and uh and there was no mention of uh opera so i, I don't know whether it's been alerted i kind of like highlighting some of these films that don't get quite the attention opera is a pretty stylish p- piece of work and uh you know so i had thought yeah. i would honor it here tonight and along with uh these other films that we mentioned so uh anything Absolutely. else you you want to plug before uh we sign off? No. No, that's about it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I was very happy to have you come on here. I was wondering if before you go, if you would uh, do a plug for my show. Okay, what's the show? What's the, give me the, uh, just, the show. Just uh, state your name and say you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. All right. And if you want to throw, is... new, yeah, and if you want to throw New Brunswick, Canada in there, you can too. All right, this is uh, Billy McNamara uh, here listening and talking to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise up in New Brunswick, Canada. Thank you so much, William, for coming on to this show. What was you going to say? That's it. Just thank you very much. Yeah, thank thank you, and thank you for everything you're doing with animals. It is very appreciated, absolutely. God bless you for it, and do you enjoy that beautiful Los Angeles weather? All right. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.